Presented by Phoenix Rising. Welcome to the Psionics Aurora Best Case Worst Case video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking the Psionics Aurora out on a full moonlit night and on a starlit night uh, with no cloud cover, so it's not quite worst case, but close enough, okay? Uh, on the two different nights, outdoor at an outdoor shooting range, we're going to be looking at objects anywhere from 40 yards going off into the woods out to 75 and 100 yards and even out to two and three hundred yard berms in the distance and showing you what the psionics is capable of and as a bonus we're going to be comparing this with a bearing optics 2.6x uh, gen 1 night vision device just to kind of to showcase again limitations of either uh, pros and cons so we have all that coming up We've got 850 and 940 illuminators because believe me, on the worst case scenario, neither of these is going to give you anything usable without using external illumination. So we're going to show you what's available for cheap and how well a couple of different options work. As we're going through the video, because this is primarily a psionics video, uh, a few other things we're going to be playing with is a digital zoom on the psionics, zooming all the way in and all the way back out. Keep in mind it's digital so you lose detail when you zoom in, but we're going to show you just what you are capable of seeing. We're also going to show all three of the night glow modes that the Psionics has to offer. Color primarily, but we'll be going into black and white or grayscale mode a little bit and the green screen mode uh, to show you how well those work. Some cases maybe those might be a little better for your uses. Uh, as an added bonus, we're going to be playing with frame rates on the Aurora. Most of the video will be, start, will be starting off at 30 frames per second, which gives you a decent blend of fluidity of motion and uh, light input. But we're also going to dial that down to 15 frames a second and 7.5 frames a second as things get a little more challenging to show you how that can assist you in being able to get an image when otherwise you might not. So uh, all that coming up. Uh, two full sets of about 20-25 minutes each outdoors with both these devices, illuminators, changing settings, all that. So hey, index right after this. A little bit more tabletop if you're interested talking about these devices and going over some limitations in filming the Gen 1 that we experienced, uh, which is a little more for just, I guess, video purposes of, uh, and clarity. Uh, but we'll have those two segments after this, but hey, you can always jump ahead and just go right outside and get to the fun stuff. So. There you have it, Psionics, Aurora, best case, worst case video. Tabletop. Okay, so let's do just a little bit of a tabletop on these two devices. Uh, we'll do this segment and we'll do a little bit talking about limitations for recording behind a, a traditional night vision device and how we did that. Uh, and then we'll be out in the field. So first let's talk about the psionics. Uh, as I believe I've already mentioned, the optics and the sensor in the psionics Aurora Sport are the same as in the Aurora Black and the traditional Aurora. So any of those uh, versions, this, this video will be uh, the same quality you're going to get as far as optically goes and capability night vision wise. Now, uh, this particular optic has a 42 degree field of view, so it's a wide field of view device, and it has a digital zoom. Now, we're going to be using a digital zoom a lot in this video uh, because, again, we're trying to see how far we can see. And keep in mind that you're losing detail as you zoom in digitally. That being said, our Gen 1 device is a 2.6x optic, and it has a 20 degree field of view. With the psionics fully zoomed in, I'm actually zoomed in tighter than with the uh, 20 degree field of view here. So I'm going to estimate uh, digital zoom, you're going to get down to 16 or 18 degree field of view, albeit at a very low resolution compared to the full resolution of this sensor. Now, a uh, couple other things on the psionics Aurora here, okay? This thing has a low battery life, a short battery life of about one and a half to two hours, and that's going to depend on temperature. It's going to depend on whether you're trying to stream the Wi-Fi, the frame rate you're operating at. A lot of things are going to impact that, but, but figure about an hour and a half to two hours on a battery. 
Uh, Cyanix Aurora Sport comes with just one and you charge it via a USB connection. So I'm going to recommend that if you're looking at an Aurora, even if it comes with a couple of batteries, you're going to want to go on Amazon or Fleabay and look for some uh, Fuji NP50 replacement batteries and you can buy a two pack of aftermarket batteries and a charger for about 15 or 20 bucks and you're really going to need that to be satisfied with this device if you play with it more than for just a, a very short period of time. Maybe even want, uh, you may even want, you know, four spare batteries. I, I have two extras and I've found that to be okay for my use, but I'm not running out all night long running this thing either. So anyway, uh, NP50 batteries, one and a half hours of usage time. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to go over because, hey, go into the channel. We've got a review on this that goes through a lot more close-up detail on the Psyonix Aurora. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this Bearing Gen 1. This is a Bearing Exacts 2.6X Gen 1, model number BE16044. Uh, this is about a $300 piece of night vision. It's not very expensive. Gen 1, nice magnification level to it, and it comes with a bonus of you can have a mount to mount this behind, uh, mount this on a right floor behind a red dot sight or something. Although for me, it works really good putting it on my test rig to get footage. So uh, this isn't bad. I've kept this thing for a few years, even though I've gotten rid of some other Gen 1 stuff, just because it does have a little bit of magnification and it's fairly well built. Bearing Optics does a pretty good job with the way they build stuff. Okay. Now, that being said, 20 degrees field of view. It's a Gen 1 commercial, so you have a fisheye effect when you're panning around a distortion on the edges of your image, but your central resolution is 35 line pairs per millimeter, which is a higher detail level than the nominal detail you're going to see on your psionics, okay? Uh, that being said, it's Gen 1, so it is fairly limited uh, in its light gathering capabilities and the type of illuminators that it can use uh, for this just this particular design. Now one advantage it does really have is that it runs on two AA batteries and you can expect 70 hours of battery life out of those, out of those two AA's if you're not using the built-in 850 nanometer illuminator. Uh, about 25 hours runtime if you're using the built-in illuminator. Now <coughs> speaking of illuminators I'm going to tell you this built-in one it doesn't work worth a darn for anything other than very very close in work you're really going to want an aftermarket illuminator with this as well as with the psionics as you shall see. Uh, to that end, you can get cheaper 850 or 940 nanometer illuminators for around 50 bucks on eBay with a charger and an 18650 battery form. Hint, you'll want a battery or two spare. Uh, and these work pretty good. Uh, there, there's some limitations. We'll show you the ins and outs of using all these, but with either of these devices, Really, you're going to want to get an illuminator to go along with it, as well as spare batteries with the Psyonix. So there you have it. There's our quick little tabletop. Uh, I'll pause this. I'll come back, talk about some limitations in our video from the behind the Gen 1, and out in the field we go. Recording limitations. Okay, let's talk about shooting video from behind a traditional night vision device, namely in this case this Bearing Optics Gen 1. Now, uh, first thing you need to understand is that there's no way, I've never seen any video that accurately shows just how good the detail level is in traditional night vision looking from behind in a by filming it with a camera, okay? And, and there's a very valid reason for that and here's basically in a nutshell what it is. Any traditional night vision device doesn't have a, a, an actual frame rate per se, okay? They all are a 100% live streaming device. So if I wanted to estimate a frame rate, I don't know, could I say 1 240th or some, one, you know, maybe a 240 hertz frame rate, something like that? Hard to really say. But what I will say is photons are continuously streaming in the front. They're being transferred into electrons and multiplied where they then stream to the back and hit a phosphorus screen which is where you get your amplification and gain looking at your phosphorus screen in the back. But that can, process is continuously happening. Uh, because of that, a lot of times when you're looking at traditional night vision, it'll have kind of a glittery, sparkly look to it because it is a live stream and there's no 
wham, update to full screen, parts of the screen are being updated continuously at a very high rate of speed. Now, when we go to put a camera behind it, and incidentally this is a DJI Osmo Action Cam, and part of the reason why I picked this thing up was uh, was actually to try and get good video from behind devices like this where you have a small exit pupil and I wanted a lens that could really capture that up close, okay? So, uh, yeah, this was kind of an investment for the channel. But, uh, but this device is shooting at 25 frames a second because not a lot of light comes out of the back of these, which is good because if you're out at night, you don't want a blindingly bright back screen back here to, to ruin your night vision otherwise when you pull away from the device. So you don't get a lot of light out of the back of this. And so to capture an image, you have to do a, a slow frame rate on your camera. So what you're capturing is 1 25th of a second of data coming in. And what that means is that where all this sparkly instantaneous update that we're perceiving with our eyes looking through this comes into play, this thing's kind of collapsing all that together into 1 25th of a second frame, which means you're going to lose a little bit of detail. There's just no way around it. That's just part of the process of trying to film with a camera behind a traditional night vision. Now, uh, so that's the limitation. In this video, what you're going to find is I the first round at full moon, I went out and I shot video at 2.7K on the, uh, on the uh, DJI camera here. And I also had the gain up to try and, again, show exact, give, give you a perception of what I was seeing looking through the back of it. And when I came back to edit it, what I found was that that 2.7K, the image circle didn't fill up the whole camera, which I knew. But when I cropped down to it to insert into the 1080p video you're watching, what I found was that I had about 60% screen height was a one-to-one -one on the actual pixels that I was capturing data with at the back of the, the Gen 1. So you'll notice that the image isn't full height uh, for the Gen 1 device in the first half of the video. Uh, and again, that's because I was shooting at 2.7K and cropping down on the DJI action camera. When we came back to do the second half, I increased the resolution to 4K video and uh, then cropped down to full image circle, which ended up being right at about 1080p. So I can actually give you a full height image circle looking behind this in the second half of the video. So that's the reason for the size difference. They both do a pretty good job representing what I could actually see with this. Although again, a little bit of a detail loss and that's just a, that's just a physical limitation of a live streaming device going to a slow frame rate camera. So there you have it. Uh, that's it. That's all the technical stuff. Let's go out in the field. Psionics and Gen 1 under full moonlight. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, share and insert some footage of the full moon we have here tonight. Out here uh, playing with the Psionics Aurora Sport and our Bearing Optics uh, Gen 1 night vision. Uh, so, like I said, if it's not 100%, it's darn close and uh, bright as all get out. So, optimal conditions for playing with night vision. And a cool moon. Definitely a cool moon. Okay, so here we are. It's, uh, oh, it's relatively late. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's a full moonlit night. January 28th, I believe. I think it's Jan uh, January 28th, 2021. And we're out here at a range, uh, outdoor range, with our Psionics Aurora Sport and a Bearing Optics 2.6X Gen 1 uh, traditional night vision with an action camera mounted behind it. Now the scenario we have going, like I said, full moon, so optimal night for night vision, although the moon with the way we're facing down range right now is actually kind of in front of us, so that it's casting some shadows that don't help our night vision out, but very bright. Now, uh, to help get a better video of the action, or of the uh, Gen 1, uh, what I've done is I've got an action cam mounted behind it. We're shooting at 2.7K resolution, uh, higher than 1080p, 30 frames a second. And uh, ISO 3200 with our, with our brightness gain up uh, plus 1.3 to give you a better representation of what we're actually able to see 
with this Gen 1 device. Uh, and because it's an action camera and it's close by, uh, right up right up at the back lens, I'm getting the exit pupil really well, so I'm actually able to show detail. And I'm hoping to be able to crop this to 1080p to really show you the, the level of detail you're going to get with a traditional night vision that you're not going to get with the Psionics, okay? So that being said, uh, optimal right now. Uh, no additional lighting going on for anything. So let's go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan across over here and you can see these uh, white objects or these uh, plastic objects out here. And basically what we have is we have uh, 50 yards, 75 yards, 100 yards, and you can barely see it out there one farther that's 125 yards out. And uh, those jugs are basically 13 and a half inches by 9 inches in size, white plastic. And I wanted to put those out there just to kind of give a, a distance and a reference. So uh, for what, you, what kind of size you can pick up if it's got enough contrast, okay? So, uh, so there's our extra, extra objects. So let's go ahead and what I want to do now is zoom in with the psionics because this is actually what this video was originally supposed to be about was just, hey, how well can a psionics do at distance with extra illumination and whatnot? So uh, there's our psionics fully zoomed in. And now if you'll notice in the difference between the two videos, at this point, the psionics has greater magnification or zoomed in a narrower field of view than our bearing optics. The bearing optics is 2.6x and 20 degrees field of view. And the psionics, in its uh, just fully uh, non-zoomed in digitally, and it is just a digital zoom, so you're losing resolution uh, or pixelating it when you zoom in. Uh, the psionics is normally 42 degree field of view, and just by me taking a wild kind of guess and playing with it. I'll say we're probably getting down to about 17 or 18 uh, degrees in field of view uh, compared to the 20 degrees with the bearing optics when we're fully digitally zoomed in at a cost of, again, cost at a cost of resolution. So got our psionics focused in. Now that building is probably about 70 yards 75 yards out and now we're looking with the moon behind us so that is actually illuminating in this direction a heck of a lot better uh, as far as what you can see with either device now uh, next thing I want to do is play with some illuminators and again it's it's it, when you're looking and you have the moonlight helping you out you really don't need an illuminator with either one of these two devices on a full moonlit night, uh, which is optimal, right? So let's go ahead and I'm going to pan into the woods here. And again, this is into the woods with no illumination. Uh, and we'll come back to the woods in a little bit. So uh, I'm looking and it, this is a fairly thick, uh, thick growth. So I'm not seeing very far in there now. This is one of the things that I keep uh, seeing brought up bashing your uh, bashing your psionic saying, well, it's not night vision, it's crappy, it's this. Okay, look at what we're seeing with our Gen 1. Nothing, okay? It is not, it does, there is not enough light for it to form an image, okay? The psionics, on the other hand, has a crappy image, okay? But an image nonetheless. Now, I'm going to zoom out with the psionics uh, to get to give you a better uh, view So that's what you're able to see. And it, not a lot of noise in the image when you're zoomed in, definitely very poor. But let's go ahead, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the illuminator on the bearing optics, okay? So now the bearing optics has its 850 illuminator, which is a small built-in one, okay? Not an aftermarket, not a big high-powered one, but a small 850. And as soon as I turn that on, I have some pretty good detail and uh, pretty good clarity contrast on my Gen 1. And holy smokes, look at the beam that's throwing on the psionics, right? That is, uh, wow, that's uh, pretty, impre pretty impressive. I'm getting a lot of white out. And I'm trying to get it to where I'm looking as far back as I can. So let's, let's zoom back in with the psionics with this 850 illuminator on the bearing optics turned on, okay? 
Let's see if I'm zoomed in all the way here. Kind of hard to feel what I'm doing with the gloves. Okay, so, and we're close in, so. Okay, uh, yeah, that's not bad, right? Not bad at all. I'm going to zoom back out with the psionics. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a couple of aftermarket illuminators. And we'll come back to this because there's a couple other tricks for the psionics to help it uh, do a little better. So that was the built-in 850 on the bearing optics, okay? Now I just turned on an 850 illuminator aftermarket. And this is a cheap $50 the T38, basically 38 millimeter uh, lens. 38 millimeter uh, lens up front with a head that can focus uh, to give you a better view. And I'm fully wide angled on this thing right now and it can zoom in. Now when you zoom in these cheaper illuminators, as you can tell, you get a lot of wobble, okay? Uh, when you get all the way zoomed in or a tight beam, it locks up pretty good and tight and all the way wide it's that way. But uh, generally speaking, 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 uh yeah the heads are kind of sloppy on them, but they're but they're not bad i mean they'll throw out enough light to make things usable so there you have it with our 850 illuminator looking into the woods where you can't really see very well otherwise uh on low and i will zoom in with the psionics real quick and uh yeah that's pretty 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 good now let's go ahead and bump this thing up to medium. Up. Low, medium. Okay. Now we're on medium. Now you can tell uh, medium with this Gen 1, very good detail, and it is it looks damn good. Okay. Uh, damn good image quality. And, and the psionics zoomed in is uh, good image quality too. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead, pan around a little bit, and I'll go one last bump up to high. And I'm running out of battery power here for the psionics, unfortunately. So, uh, okay, yeah. Let's see if I can... Okay, so there's focused in, and if I take this beam and pull it all the way out, you can see that we really can illuminate a couple hundred yards away easily for either of these devices. So uh, that's 850 illuminator. Now I want to fire up this 940 and I'm going to run out of battery power if I'm not careful here on the psionics. Okay. 940 illuminator on low. And uh, looking into the woods, again, 940 does not work well with this Gen 1. Gen 1 caps out at about 900 for usable light. And uh, So yeah, nine, it, it caps out at about at about 900. So you get a little bit of usable light out of 940 for Gen 1, but not much. So let me go up to medium and then up to bright. Oh, there's, there's bright. So uh, that's high on the nine, 940. Very usable for psionics, a little bit of a different cast of light. And it is usable with the Gen 1, but not very much so. So my recommendations with a Gen 1 device is you want to stick with a uh, 850 because uh, you're really not going to be able to use a 940 much to your benefit if you're using a, a Gen 1 device. Now, okay, uh, one more thing before I run out of battery power here playing with the psionics is, okay, we're right now we have no illuminators on. Gen 1... You're not really picking up anything in the dark woods. Uh, and we have a good bit of color noise 
with the psionics so there's two things you can do and i'm recording at 30 frames a second uh, you can cut down your frame rate which will give you more light and i'm not going to do that uh because i don't know how well actually you know what I, I maybe i will let me pause this on with the psionics we'll pause our recording we'll come back and i'm going to bump it down to the slowest frame rate of seven and a half frames a second I don't know if I'll be able to load this footage or not, but we'll do that to see how much of a difference that makes in our... Okay, so we're back. Sorry that took so long. Uh, so we're back. Now we're recording at 7.5 frames a second. Now you can see how blurry the image is, but we did get rid of a lot of color noise so that's one thing you can do at the expense of frame rate you can slow that down get more light into the psionics to give you a better image quality now i'm going to go back to 30 frames a second i'm going to demonstrate real quick here uh one other thing that when you're in a low light situation and the psionics is really struggling uh this is going to help you uh to to get a more usable image and that what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to black and white mode at 30 frames a second so you're not really giving up any frame rate but uh you'll find that the noise is much less noticeable okay so we're back we're back at 30 frames a second and we're now recording in black and white mode uh versus our color mode or our night color and so what you'll notice is, yeah, you still have a lot of flickering noise, which is kind of it looks similar in nature to what you get on traditional night vision with a, this kind of a sparkling effect. But uh, you'll 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 actually uh, get a much you'll be able to get uh, more usable imagery at lower light effectively still uh, by going to this what looks like a white phosphor or black and white screen versus your uh versus your color if you're into a low light situation so and again see i'm panning across here seamlessly and uh what a difference between our gen one and our psionics now uh one thing i will show you and oh airplane airplane we gotta get the airplane let's see if we can get the airplane there's the airplane Ooh, sparkly uh, <laughs> uh yeah gotta love it so okay let me go ahead and we'll switch to a uh, green screen on a psionics real quick and i'm not real fond of it and i'll tell you why when we get into that mode so give me just a moment and we'll come right back okay and we are back uh, in our green screen mode now uh, I do like green screen on tradition I do like green screen on traditional night vision but what I found is that on digital night vision basically you you get washed out because it's just using it's just using your green pixels on the screen so your green gets washed out you lose contrast and uh i mean see i'm looking in the woods here and it's like uh yeah you see everything's just washed out so whereas i do like green i think it has value because you can see more shades of green or perceive more shades of green than other colors uh, it has a lot of added value as in night vision uh with the psionics with uh you know sight mark wraith uh with any device that i've ever seen that has that green screen uh as far as a digital night vision uh i just don't like the implementation i mean I, I like the color but i don't like the implementation i think you're better off to uh better off to stay color or go black and white so uh full moon final look around okay so we're we're back and uh we'll do uh, a quick pan around back in our regular digital color uh, night vision with the psionics and let me see if i can kind of 
maybe get unity a little bit. Uh, I don't know if, between the two devices. So I just figure, well, hey, we'll just do a quick slow, a quick slow plant, blah, 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 slow pan around, and just uh, just a parting shot here as we do our comparison uh, between Gen One and our Psionics and play with the Psionics for uh, play with the Psionics and and give a demonstration of how well uh, you can see with it under different circumstances and let's, let's just go ahead and throw throw a beam out here and and back off Oops. So yeah, it's uh there you go, psionics with uh using the digital zoom, using some illuminators, and comparing it to uh to some traditional gen one with all of the same. Oh, I gotta pardon my my sniffling here. Okay. Well, there you have it. Cyanix Aurora, full moon, ah, uh, illuminators zoomed in, zoomed out, and comparing it to Gen One. So, uh, I hope you got some value out of this video. Uh, if you did, hey, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Appreciate you watching, sticking with me out here on this cold night. Uh, I'll come out here at night so you don't have to. So anyway, uh, Psionics, Gen 1, Zoom, Illuminators, lots of fun, good times. Psionics and Gen 1 under starlight only. Okay, well, here we are, out at the range. And uh, we've got our Psionics Aurora Sport and our Bearing Optics 2.6X Gen 1 uh, night vision both sitting here. And uh, we've got an illuminator on because it is a pitch black night. Uh, it's a starlit night, beautiful view of the star, but, uh, but no moonlight. So it, it, for practical purposes, this is a night where even uh, Gen 3 would struggle. So uh, we were out here earlier and did some uh, imagery with a full moon that was uh, great and uh, everything looked hunky-dory. Now we're out here in pitch black. So uh, we've gone from best case to pretty much worst case. So first thing I'm going to do here is uh, if what you see is... Uh, a target at 75 yards and actually it has a uh, it has a uh, Bambi on it that's my breath <sighs> it's a little bit nipply out tonight so uh, anyway uh, we have a target at 75 yards and that target is two foot by two foot square sitting on the uh, on the ground standing up of course and it actually has a Bambi on it so uh, I thought maybe that might be interesting to try and give a good gauge of what we can see with the, with this night vision at a modest range of 75 yards. So, uh, of course, the bearing optics, we're not going to get any more zoom than that, but that's a 2x2 two two at 75 yards. And, by the way, we have an aftermarket 850 illuminator on. And low, medium, and on high. Now, uh, it is zoomed in a partially and uh as you can see in the psionics we're we're kind of throwing a beam we're not giving it the best we can get for a full screen view of the psionics so let's go ahead and widen this out 
and try and get the okay so there we go we're at our widest setting on this 850 illuminator and uh we can see pretty good but you can see the psionics is struggling out to that 750 yards now the bearing optics on the other hand uh at that kind of a distance we're really we really are struggling because it doesn't have enough light with this wide angle on our uh wide angle setting on our 850 illuminator so let's go ahead and zoom this back in some and we'll get it to where we're actually zoomed in good for the now that's full full zoom uh tightest spot as we can get on our 850 illuminator and i'm going to actually widen that back out to give us a better a full frame view or a, a pretty much a full frame light pattern at about 2.6x okay so we're winding back out now what i wanted to do is i wanted to demonstrate the zoom the digital zoom on this psionics now uh we go ahead and start bumping this in and the psionics can actually uh full screen it zooms in more than what that 2.6x is on the barracks on the barracks on the uh, bearing optics so i'm going to try and focus the psionics Okay, and that's about as good as the psionics is going to get. So, uh, 850 illuminator on high. Now, right now, just so you know how we're recording all this, I may have to stand back because my breath is uh, interfering here. But the way we're recording this right now is we're recording 720p video with the psionics in movie mode. And that's at 30 frames per second. And I have the the gain setting at a null or zero, so it's just uh, that's as as it gets. Now, I took video earlier through the Gen One, and I did it at 2.7 uh, 2.7K resolution. And uh, what I also did was uh, I had like a 1.2 gain on it. And when I got done filming and I started editing everything, I, I decided I wanted to try and do better than that. <clears throat> Get a little better resolution and try and adequately show you how good the Gen 1 performs because it really still didn't quite do it justice. So uh, what we're doing right now is we're recording in 4K video uh, with the highest ISO my uh, action camera, uh, my DJI can do, which is 3200 ISO. We're shooting at uh, 24 frames a second, or yeah, 25, 24 frames a second with a 125th shutter speed, and we're doing that at the max gain, which is plus 3.0, which gives us a, a, a pretty much the same view that we, I would actually get seeing, uh, as about as close as I can get it with any device that I've had so far. So uh, that's the methodology we're doing right now. Now, uh, 850 illuminator, things don't look too bad here. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pan, like I said, that's that target's two foot square at 75 yards. So let's just go ahead and kind of slowly pan around and look off into the woods. Now, uh, I'm not going to focus the Gen 1 because I, it, I have to take it off, focus it, then try and refocus it, uh, the back end to get the best picture quality on it and uh so that makes it a little bit more difficult to do so so those, right now those woods are probably about 35 yards out and i'm going to zoom back out with the psionics here and we'll pan around and get to where we're actually looking a little farther so there's our target. Now that is a 100 yard backstop and those uh, those sheets you're seeing are actually 4 by 8 feet I think or better. And let me see if I can play with the focus here a little bit. I'm going the wrong way I think. Okay so what we're going to do is focus our beam about as far as we, way as we can get it. So. 
There's the detail and the resolution we can see at 100 yards. With both devices at their uh, native resolution with the uh, spot beam. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on our psionics and try and refocus here a little bit. And there you have it. That's 100 yards. Now, as I pan to the right, you can see in the center of our view is now our 200 yard berm. And again, that's the same size. That's like four by eight sheets of uh, whiteboard for the target backing. And lastly, if I get all the way over here, we're now looking at 300 yards. So uh, there you have a pretty good idea of our resolution that these devices are capable of. Now, as you can see, the Gen 1 definitely has resolution over the psionics, okay? But the psionics, I think, has better light amplification. So, uh, now what I want to do is I'm going to turn off the illuminator to show you just what we're getting with both of these devices on nothing but a starlit night, okay? Nothing. <laughs> You really, I mean, what the difference is, is, you know, the Gen 1, you just, there's not enough light for it to form an image. And with the psionics, you just have a digital noise field. And all you can really make out is the skyline. So, uh, again, both these on this type of a situation, this kind of an environment, need illumination. So let's go ahead and turn our illuminator back on. We'll drop it down to low, medium. High. Let's widen this back out again. And again, this is an 850 illuminator, okay? I have it covered in pretty good, yeah. Okay, so now, 850 illuminator. Let's go ahead and look off into the woods and see how well these things are seeing out into the trees. And, uh, Again, very good detail on the Gen 1. And one thing to notice, too, in the Gen 1, and, and just I'm going to pan back and forth, is this Gen 1 is 35 line pairs per millimeter center resolution at the center. But look at the fisheye effect that you're getting there, okay? Your outer edges are nowhere near that. However, your, uh, however your closer in stuff is. So... Let me go ahead and I'm throwing now, now I'm looking with a regular beam and this is just a regular headlamp and I'm looking into the woods and I can see probably 40 or 50 yards in there. And as you can see, uh, plenty of light for both of these to form a good, good image. But, uh, pardon me, okay, let me off. Low high, okay. So the Gen One, of course, now I can I can see off into the woods, but my vision is limited, probably to about thirty yards before it just blacks out. Uh, so like in that in the gap underneath where that angled branch is, I can see the gap, but I can't really see anything detail in it where you can make that out with the Gen One. And with the psionics, let's go ahead and focus. Uh, again, not bad detail, but again, we're, we're digitally zoomed in. So if I go and widen out, uh, but the psionics in night mode is actually a pretty, pretty, pretty good image quality. So I'm going to go ahead and what I really wanted to do is actually determine the range on that. So I'm going to pause this because I, I left my uh, range meter in the truck and uh, I can get this darn light to turn off. There we go. Uh, 
So we'll go ahead, we're going to pause this, we'll come back, we'll play around with this stuff some more. 850 versus 940 illuminators. Okay, uh, we're back recording again. Still have our 850 illuminator on. And we're going to leave the night vision rolling. And I verified that uh, basically where we're looking at the, the trees right there is about 40 yards away is what I'm seeing for distance uh, where you can see the uh, foliage, okay? And if we pan around, uh, kind of the same thing over to this area. And, uh, low, medium, high, okay. Uh, same thing, we're looking at about 40 yards distance. Uh, so that's that's kind of the detail that we can expect. We'll pan back around, get to our 75 yard range. And there you go, 75 yards. Now, uh, there's a few things I wanted to do, and I'm just going to, first things, uh, I guess we need to take a look at our second illuminator, okay? Now, I'm going to turn off this 850, and I'm going to turn on our 940. And I'm trying to get it to where, uh, I'm going to play on this thing. Actually, I'm going to have to get in front of it to see. Okay, so I've got a 940 illuminator on, and it is on high right now, okay? Now, if you'll notice, we're really uh, not getting as much usable light for the 940 as we were the 850, right? And I believe I got that widened out. <laughs> Kind of dial this thing in a little bit. Okay, so now we're throwing a bit of a beam with our 940. And there we have it. It's good and focused. Now, uh, the 940, you can tell we're really, we're not getting much usable light at all as far as the Gen 1 goes. Uh, just not much usable light. And the reason for that is your Gen 1 phosphors, at least uh, the ones that are in this bearing optics, they cut out at about 900 nanometers is about the wavelength where you're, you're, you're about as good as it's going to get. Uh, or the most, that's where it's sensitive. Anything lower than that, it picks up. Your psionics, on the other hand, is a CMOS sensor, and it's got a special silicone or silicon in it. I believe it's more of a textured basis or something like that from what I've read. But anyway, the psionics can see all the way up to 1100. <coughs> Excuse me. So much more usable light out of the psionics. Now, uh, from a practical user standpoint, where does this come into effect? Or what, what benefit does a 940 have over an 850? Well, because your LEDs actually put out light bleeding off to either side of the primary frequency that they emit at that 840 or 850 nanometer puts enough visible light out to where when we focus a beam like we have it to be able to see at a distance i can see that light if it's focused 300 yards away okay i've verified that probably farther than that but at least 300 yards away if it's pointing it in my direction i can look and i can say hey look there's a red light with a 940 illuminator i can barely make it out at 100 yards but much beyond that it's virtually undetectable to the naked eye or at least when i was testing it and, and playing with these okay so uh, if you're going to use a gen 1 device just keep in mind the illuminators you're going to have to use are going to have to be 850s and they're going to have to, uh, they're going to make you more visible to, to people and probably game animals, depending on, you know, the species and how it perceives light. So that's the illuminator scenario. I'm going to go ahead and turn this 940 back off. So now we're running on the 850. Now, uh, we are getting a little bit of haze and fog kind of rolling in. Not a lot, but a little bit, so. Okay, so we're back to looking at about 40 yards into the woods. Using our 850 illuminator. Great picture on everything, okay? 
Uh, now what I want to do is I'm going to shut off the psionics. I'm going to leave the Gen 1 rolling. And I'm going to change some settings on this psionics so we can push it. If I can get to where I got so much clutter around me, it's kind of hard for me to get around this thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the settings on the psionics. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lower the frame rate to 15 frames a second. Using the Aurora at reduced frame rates and alternate night glow modes. Okay, now we're at 15 frames a second at 720p and I just started recording now. Obviously with this 850 illuminator on high, we had plenty of light for 30 frames a second. And I wanted to start at 30 frames a second because that's a good resolution to... Uh, that's a good resolution to, uh, to, to be able to get relatively smooth motion. Now, with no illuminator on, you'll notice that our noise level on the psionics, of course, no illuminator on, Gen 1 can't see. Our noise level with the psionics is still pretty, pretty horrific. And I can barely make out the 75 yard target knowing that it's there but as far as being able to to use use it for anything practical uh on a starlit night even at 15 frames a second no we're not now i'm going to pause the psionics again okay now uh we're now at seven and a half frames a second now at seven and a half frames a second on a starlit night, that's cleared up our image to where is it usable looking? No, I mean we're getting there. There's a there's a woods at 40 yards on the right. Total noise. Uh, we get out to the starlight in the open areas, and uh, it's a little bit better. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna pause this. And we're going to gain up a bit. Okay, so now we're at seven and a half frames a second, and we have the gain set to plus one. And sorry, this is looking pretty boring for the Gen 1 image here. Uh, so, again, I can see the 100 yard target, the 200 yard range, and I can barely make out the 75 yard range, but terrible image quality. But I can see more than I can with this. Uh, just little bearing optics gen 1 so let's go ahead and turn on our 850 illuminator and this is with our 850 on low and between doing these two uh, 850 on low, seven and a half frames a second, gain at one. Uh, still relatively usable. Zoomed in out to 100 yards. Uh, Gen 1 on the other hand, not really, not with that kind of low level. So let's go ahead, uh, we'll turn this back off because uh, as you can see now that's zoomed in with the psionics. And seven and a half frames a second. Now there is one other thing that we can do that I find does help with the psionics. Oops, I gotta stop recording first here. Okay, so there we are zoomed in again with no uh no light and our night glow set to grayscale. And again, still nothing usable looking off into the woods, but we'll go ahead and turn our illuminator back on. And I believe that's, well, actually I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay, so there it is low. And you know what, I forgot to turn the frame rate back up. Uh, but there's low, seven and a half frames a second grayscale and uh, 
zoomed all the way in. And let me focus this. That, okay, that's 100 yards. That's the best we're going to do. And uh, with our 850 on low. Now I'm going to turn on this 940. And I got to go around because I can't really tell how you've been using the Gen 1 as a reference. Okay, so there's a 940 on low, which is the most invisible illuminator. And with the psionics, let me see if I can oh, find a thing and focus it here. There we go, now we're focusing. Okay, so uh, seven and a half frames a second. with our psionics with a 940 illuminator focused and on low which is basically invisible and uh, we're not of course the gen one's not usable but at our seven and a half frames a second uh monochrome psionics is and that's not bad now we are zoomed in so again if i go if i go wide angle i can tell that we have a lot better and it's 75 yards that's pushing that 940 a bit but bump it up to maybe medium and again, uh, you seem pretty darn good. So I think I think there, there you have it. That's just uh, give you a pretty good idea what the psionics is capable of with an illuminator compared to the Gen One. Don't breathe, I'm making too much fog. So there's our green screen. And like I said, you know, it's uh the green screen is very difficult to work with because it just puts it too darn much. It's rid of too much uh, contrast. I mean, that's not too bad there, but uh, there you have it, green screen. Let's go ahead, pump our 850 illuminator on and get it dialed up. Got to part with a little bit, to, uh, a little bit more of our Gen 1 here. And I did want to take some, uh, there we go. A little bit more beamed in. Almost too bright for the psionics. Yeah, let me go ahead and change the psionics. I'm going to pause recording on the psionics and go back to our uh, our night color mode here. Okay, much better. So there you have it. Uh, Gen 1 and the Psionics, and I'll take a couple pictures with the Gen 1 and the Psionics just to uh, just to just to try and uh, again show the Psionics will look the same as the video, but I think I, with some good pictures I might be able to show a little bit better representation of the detail on this Gen 1. So again, uh, they both have pros and cons. Psionics definitely has better amplification. Can use a 940 illuminator but lower resolution gen 1 better detail but you're limited in other ways so let's go ahead and we'll cut this and uh take some pictures and that'll be it here we go okay i did want to do one last thing 
That is to turn off the illuminator, the separate illuminator, and turn on the bearing optics illuminator. Oops, too much glare there. So there's just the uh, built-in illuminator on the bearing optics. And I wanted to show you how well it works. Uh, and there's our 75 yard target, and I can't tell if... Oh, there's my glasses. Can't tell if I've got the bearing optics actually focused that well. Uh, that might be close, but anyway. Uh, so I did want to just look around with just the built-in illuminator to show you how well the bearing optics illuminator works for the bearing optics and uh, the psionics both. And there we are looking back into our woods and there's our 40 yards uh, 40 yards wood shot. So okay, parting farewell. And there we are looking up at the sky. And illuminator off. Yeah, not too much going on there, huh? Again, I wish it was a quarter moon light. That would might actually work a little better for us. So uh, there you have it. Uh, I'm signing off. I hope you enjoyed this video on the best case, worst case use of the Psionics Aurora. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while free for download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. Commercial use is forbidden without my consent. Thanks for watching.